and my bedroom is private and I'm not dressed in my hijab. I'm pretty much <laughs> barely dressed and it's comfortable for me because getting dressed is hard with the back um, issue I have right now with my back injury. So hi Vanessa. Yeah, so that's why I have a radio show. So Caroline, I know it's not like probably the most exciting what you're used to, but as soon as I can cam up, you better believe I will be because I mean, in my videos anyways, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my live streaming. I, I don't want to give up on something like I want to try to follow through on things, which you guys know I never do. So I am when something is hard and it's just new, I don't think it's, you know, I want to try to like follow it through and try to make it more exciting. All right. Brace yourselves for the latest episode of Chantal's Bizarre Broadcasts, where we unravel the mystery of her newest live stream. It's a whirlwind of attitude, delusion, and classic Chantal chaos. So let's dive right in. We kick off with Chantal greeting her chat, trying her best to sound enthusiastic, but coming across more like a grumpy cat forced to interact with people. Barely through the hellos, she's already throwing shade. You'd think she's prepping for a WWE SmackDown with her viewers. Then the infamous chat alarm saga begins. Every time she gets a super chat, her phone pings like it's possessed by the ghost of an old Nokia ringtone. Frustration mounts, and she admits she has no clue how to fix it. Uh, enter Sala, the tech support savior. Honestly, the patience of this guy deserves a gold star. Or maybe just a vacation far away from chat alarms and Chantal's tirades. Next, someone asks why she's not on Twitter. Her response? A disdainful, that's ridiculous, delivered with the kind of venom you'd expect from someone asked to donate a kidney. She then lashes out about complaints regarding her podcast era. It's either this or nothing, she snaps. Oh, Chantal, bless your heart. We're all so grateful for whatever content crumbs you deem us worthy of. She drops a bombshell. Her medications, including those mysterious injections, are no longer working. Shocking, right? It's like discovering water is wet. Cue the melodrama as she moans about how she's not allowed to have any supporters and laments how terrible she is. Somebody fet fetch her a tiny violin, pronto. She's also sworn off weighing herself, but with a magical twist, when she does step on the scale, there better be a loss. Because that's how weight loss works, folks. Pure, unfiltered, wishful thinking. Then comes the first vanishing act of the night. She disappears from the chat, presumably to deal with another earth-shattering crisis, like finding a matching sock. When she returns, it's straight into monetization mode, rattling off ways to support her channel, including sending money directly via PayPal. Because who needs dignity when you can beg for cash mid-rant? Now, on to the main event, being on the mend. Chantal claims she had a breakthrough and not the medical kind, more like a journey into the rabbit hole of delusional self-help. Her latest miracle cures, vitamin D supplements and basking in sunlight. That's right, she's turning herself into a human solar panel. If you can't fix it with a doctor, why not try baking like a rotisserie chicken in the sun? We take a nostalgic trip down memory lane with old photos and the legendary moldy blue pot. Ah, memories. She then boasts about how much better she is at impulse spending. I still do it, just less, she declares. What a triumph. Meanwhile, she assures us that her and Sala are happily married and she definitely does not have pink eye because every solid marriage involves clarifying eye infections on a live stream. And now we're back to the chat. It's like watching someone trying to hold a conversation while dodging random dodgeballs. She deftly avoids any serious talk about therapy for her food issues, instead opting for the familiar territory of high school anecdotes, including including a probably fabricated story about a special ed child she once spoke to. The lengths she goes to paint herself as the Mother Teresa of Cornwall are truly something to behold. Cutting toxic people out of your life? Family included? Check. Endless rants about reaction channels? Double check. We're stuck in a loop, folks. And then, out of nowhere, she veers into talking about RuPaul's Drag Race and wheelchairs. The content variety is as baffling as her decision-making skills. As we limp to the finish line, she throws out a final curveball, a vague threat about doing a gaming stream. Because nothing says high-energy gameplay like someone who gets winded walking to the fridge. 
And that, folks, wraps up another adventure in the chaotic world of Chantal's live streams. Stay tuned for the next episode, where we'll undoubtedly dive into more madness and mayhem. Same gun time, same gun channel. Now, not much works in the way of medications, even those injections. Hi, Orange Pulp. So, um... <laughs> Gia, I don't think so. I don't think you would want to do that. But sometimes I wish because honestly, like before, going to the bathroom was unbearable. It's great. Also like this. Glad you guys like it. You're human and have a right to rest if you're injured. If this is all you can do, so be it. Thank you. It's so annoying. Her fake positive and fake laugh. Who are we talking about? Me? No, not me, right? I don't have a nice fake laugh. <laughs> no name. Heart, any improvement? Beautiful. I guess I was on Twitter for being in here yesterday. I'm not on Twitter, but was told I was mentioned a lot. Hold on to your seats because this one's a doozy. So remember how Chantal was all about those daily doctor visits for her mysterious injections? Yeah, apparently she's as committed to that schedule as she is to her gym memberships. Meaning, not at all. Today, she casually drops that she should go in for a recheck soon. Oh, Chantal. Keeping track of your own lies would make even Sherlock Holmes break a sweat. First, it's every day without fail, and now it's a maybe I'll pop in soon. Talk about a plot twist. This woman's timeline is more tangled than a pair of earphones left in your pocket. And can we talk about her obsession with Delauded for a hot minute? It's like she's got a one-track mind, and that track is leading straight to a pharmacy. Uh, from her chipper, almost bizarrely upbeat streams, you'd think she's just discovered the joys of roller coasters and ice cream, not suffering from severe pain. If she's supposedly writhing in agony from her sciatica, then I'm the queen of England. Newsflash, nobody acts like they're on top of the world while they're in excruciating pain. Even if you're as high as a kite on the best stuff modern medicine has to offer, pain doesn't suddenly turn into a euphoric carnival ride. So either her pain threshold is supernatural or she's milking this sciatic, sciatica gig for every last drop. My money's on the latter. And let's not forget the numbers game. Even with this new bedbound arc, she can't seem to pull more than 535 viewers. It's like watching a desperate performer juggle flaming swords while nobody even glances up from their phones. Meanwhile, FFG is cruising with a solid 4K audience, probably sipping tea and chuckling at the whole debacle. The viewer stats don't lie. People are flocking to the competition and Chantal's still stuck trying to figure out why her clown act isn't packing the tent. But here's the real kicker. That creepy AF, AI likeness she's parading around in StreamYard. Sweet baby Jesus. Talk about nightmare fuel. It's like if you asked an AI to draw a haunted doll version of Chantal. It's uncanny in the worst way possible. The kind of thing that would make even the bravest of souls want to sleep with the lights on. If this is her idea of, of keeping the audience engaged, I can only imagine the therapy bills her viewers are racking up. In the end, Chantal's latest live stream is a masterclass in chaotic storytelling, nonsensical claims, and a steadfast refusal to stick to any semblance of reality. Each new arc is just another layer of madness wrapped in a blanket of contradictions. And we, the ever-curious audience, can only watch, bemused and bewildered, as she navigates this self-made carnival of confusion. Oh my gosh. Okay, what is... Okay, I missed some comments here. Elodie, um... Are you talking about me? Someone thinks I'm on Dilaudid? Is that what you're saying? Okay, number one, who cares if I was, if it's prescribed by a doctor? I'm not, but if I was, for I've you know, pain meds can be useful as long as they're not abused. Okay, so I think if people just accuse me of abusing them, I think they're projecting. That's all I'm going to say. I try to answer everyone's questions. Um, okay, so now, uh, Samira, I've literally been watching you religiously since like 2017. First time I'm commenting. You were 17 and now you're 24. Wow. Jeez, did I have any influence on you growing up or what? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's break down the latest in the ongoing saga of Chantal, aka Foodie Beauty. This woman is the Houdini of internet deception, constantly pulling new tricks out of her hat to keep us guessing. 
but since she switched to voice-only streams, it's a whole different game now. No more hiding behind those dramatic expressions, hijab fiddling, or strategically placed purring cats. Now it's just her voice, and it's becoming glaringly obvious that she's as transparent as a window pane. First off, let's talk about her usual arsenal of distractions. Whether it's playing with her hijab like she's auditioning for a fidget spinner commercial, flashing her pets like, like she's running a petting zoo, or diving headfirst into whatever calorie-laden monstrosity she's rossity she's munching on that day, Chantal knows how to keep us looking everywhere except where the real story lies. It's like she's hosting a never-ending episode of Look Over Here, complete with her own bizarre brand of smoke and mirrors. For those of us dissecting her every move, the visuals used to be a gold mine. Every frown, every eye roll, and every strategically framed shot told a story. It was like piecing together a mystery novel with the world's most uncooperative protagonist. But now, with her switching to voice only, we're left with just her words. And oh boy, are they revealing. Without the usual distractions, we're tuning into her tone, her hesitations, and those classic Chantal slips where she contradicts herself faster than you can say extra cheese. It's almost poetic, really. In trying to hide more, she's ended up revealing a lot more about herself. Her tone gives away more than her expressions ever did. The way she spits out words with that mix of irritation and false bravado, or how her voice speeds up when she's cornered, it's like a neon sign flashing, I'm hiding something. If she thinks this new format is fooling anyone, she's sorely mistaken. We may not have the full picture yet, but rest assured, the truth like that embarrassing family photo you tried to hide, it always finds a way to resurface. Now let's be honest, there's something satisfying about not having to endure her smug, condescending expressions or watching her guzzle down another trough of the swill of the day. It's like a reprieve for our senses, a break from the never-ending buffet of cringe. But even in this voice-only format, she's still spinning her web of half-truths and full-on fabrications. Each word is carefully selected, each phrase meticulously designed to keep us in the dark. But here's the kicker. The voice-only streams might just be her downfall. Without her usual bag of visual tricks, we're all ears dissecting her every syllable. The theories about her real situation are buzzing louder than ever, and with every stream, we get closer to piecing together the puzzle. So Chantal, keep talking. Keep spinning your tails. Because in the end, the truth is like a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. It can only dodge for so long before it gets caught. In the meantime, we'll be here, perfectly content not to see her smug, arrogant face or watch her scarf down another round of whatever greasy delight she's decided to grace us with that day. We'll keep listening, picking apart every word and waiting for that inevitable moment when the facade crumbles and the real story comes spilling out. Until then, it's just another day in the bizarre world of foodie beauty. Um, I do want to do one gaming night a week at least. I want to play these games that we've purchased that we haven't used. So, <laughs> you know, I definitely have to do that. Now, I wanted to talk about being on the mend because today um, was kind of a breakthrough where, okay, just for example, it's just to go to the bathroom when I was first injured. I don't know how I injured myself. When you're fat, like when you're really, I shouldn't say fat, but when you're heavy like me, um, and you have a small bone frame, like you, you have a smaller frame cause I'm, sh I'm very short. Um, I'm, I'm just guessing injury from something. I don't know. Maybe the mattress, maybe not. Who knows? Anyways, I used to have to like kind of crawl on my hands and put all my weight on my hands and it took me forever. Now I just roll right out like a barrel, <laughs> just in and out of bed. No problem. The idea that she's hiding bruises from domestic violence doesn't hold water. If Salah had laid a hand on her, it would seep through in her language, her behavior, and her interactions. There would be subtle or not so subtle hints dropped in her conversations, the kind of emotional undertones that are nearly impossible to mask completely. Despite her love for drama and stirring up speculation, Chantal's current predicament seems more rooted in her declining physical health rather than any nefarious activities on Salah's part. She's been on a downward spiral for a while now, growing increasingly sick and less mobile over the past year. 
It doesn't take much to imagine that she's crossed a threshold where even the most basic activities of daily ADLs have become insurmountable challenges. For someone of her size and health condition, the line between being able to manage being completely incapacitated can be razor thin. Chantal's avoidance of the camera and her insistence on staying bedbound suggest that she's grappling with significant discomfort. Whether it's sciatica, a severe muscle strain, or another chronic pain issue, she's definitely struggling. And when she talks about her bed and emphasizes how it's her own space, it hints at a more solitary existence. The repeated mentions of her bed and the reluctance to film in her bedroom could be a clear signal that she's not sharing that space with Salah. Showers for someone of Sean's size and limited mobility are already a Herculean task. They take forever, require a lot of effort, and are exhausting. If she's experiencing pain or severe discomfort, standing or even sitting upright in the shower becomes nearly impossible. It's almost a guarantee that she's not maintaining her hygiene in the way she should, simply because it's too physically taxing for her right now. She might even struggle with just getting dressed, especially in her usual elaborate attire. Her current condition likely prevents her from putting on the hijab, the layers of clothing, and even the chin spanks that she's adopted since moving to Kuwait. This isn't just about enjoying the drama or the speculation from Goral World. It's about the practical difficulties of getting herself camera ready when she's in pain or severely uncomfortable. The effort required to appear on camera in her usual state is likely too great for her to handle at the moment. Moreover, the dramatic drop in her physical appearance on camera, from heavily filtered selfies to a voice-only stream, aligns with her inability to manage these tasks. The sheer effort of getting presentable, combined with the necessity to mask her declining health, is too much. This all points to a genuine struggle with her physical condition, rather than uh, some orchestrated plot to hide bruises or stir up drama. In conclusion, Chantal's current off-camera stint and her visible struggle with daily activities seem to be a direct result of her declining health and her significant discomfort, not some hidden domestic violence scenario. While she might enjoy the chaos her absence creates, the more mundane reality is that she's likely just too unwell to maintain her usual online persona. The drama, while a side benefit for her, is not the main driving force here. It's the practical difficulty of maintaining her online image while her body continues to betray her.